Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for The Mindful Eye and part two of a two-part photo of the week video. This is the image that we've been discussing. It's a powerful portrait created by Eric, who's an intermediate photographer from New York. Really encourage you to watch part one of this two-part video to get the most out of this video because I'm just going to pick up right where I left off in video one. Didn't give you the metadata the first time around. Want to do that now. This image was shot with a Canon 5D, an effective focal length of 70 millimeters, ISO 500, F67, and 1 250th of a second is the rest of the metadata. Want to talk for a quick second about the focal length here. Eric is working with a focal length that's a little bit shorter than what we're told is the classic focal length range for classic portraiture, about 85 to 135. And um, one of the uh, potential powers of going shorter than 85 is that if we want to shoot head and shoulders like Eric is shooting here, it's kind of force us to move in really close, five feet or closer. Conventional wisdom would say that's too close. We're going to get inside of the circle of social comfort for our portrait subject. But if we start from a little bit further away, and we work with some very basic rapport building skills. We can build rapport to the point where we can move in closer. And one of the things I love about these shorter focal lengths, the 50 to 70 millimeter range, which is really my favorite range for shooting both impromptu portraits and formal portraits, we just have a lot more of an immediate effect on each other in terms of a collaboration between uh, yourself or myself as a photographer and our portrait subjects. The other nice thing about thinking of these shorter focal lengths is you could use the idea of starting with longer focal lengths and then changing lenses and moving in closer to do one of the things I talked about in the first video and that is modulate the shoot, modulate the way you're shooting, modulate the energy of the shoot. Far away is very different than close. Just really encourage you to try both, see all the ways that both of these uh, areas of focal length might help you, but particularly these shorter focal lengths if you've not been working with them. Let's talk about elements and principles of design. Eric is working with monochrome here. Very obvious that he is. He looks like he's converted to black and white and toned a little bit. Really want to encourage you to consider the power of black and white. Think about it on a couple of levels. A real general basic level, if you're struggling with composition and also um, the conceptual and visioning work that you're doing in post-processing, I'd really encourage you, no matter what you're shooting, to uh, just get rid of color for a while. I'd really encourage you to pick a whole month or three months or six months and just work in black and white. Black and white is simpler. And now with digital cameras, you get completely away from what used to be so difficult with a film camera about black and white. In the film days, you had to pre-visualize the world in monochrome. You no longer have to do that. You can set your camera to shoot in monochrome. Color is incredibly complicating. Black and white can help us in a couple of different ways, particularly when it comes to shooting people. Colors have emotional baggage, and that emotional baggage of color will sit out in front of everything, even the image of a face itself. It definitely can get in front of the expressions and gestures and the psychology that expression and gesture could potentially convey to the viewer go to black and white, we're able to, one, at just the level of thinking in a foundation way about composition, it's easier to see the intrinsic qualities of our composition, like value, like texture, like line, like shape. And in the same way, it's also a lot of times easier for the viewer to be moved on a psychological level by gesture and expression. Just for one second, imagine this uh, sock cap being any hue at all. And it's pretty easy if you imagine any hue, any color idea that pops into your head, pretty easy to imagine that taking away from what this gesture and expression is doing. I want to talk about light as an element of design. In photography, it's the quality and quantity of our light source or sources relative to the reflective quality of our subjects that drives one of the most basic and important elements of design, value. It's so easy to just say, if we're going to photograph a single object, like a flower on a table, a still life, or a flower in nature, or a portrait subject relative to a background, so easy to say, hey, let's just work in flat light, because that'll, that'll be simple. Uh, but it can be boring. It can be very complicating to do what Eric uh, and Chris are doing here. They essentially have spots of light. It's easy to imagine that if this is more dynamic and Chris is moving, that every time he moves, it changes the lighting setup. So I understand that working with dynamic light and specific lighting setups can be complicated. So much of the time, 
um, building up to a point where you can see and find dimensional, multi-dimensional, exciting qualities of light is going to add a lot to the idea of any uh, image, uh, and in particular uh, portraiture. One of the very powerful things that's being driven here by this dynamic quality of light is the design principle of variation. Instead of having flat light everywhere, we have some places that are bright and other places that are in a shadow. We have some places that are getting a lot of light and some places that aren't reflecting any light relative to how this has been presented as a photograph. And what does that do for us? As long as that pattern doesn't become too chaotic, then uh, it, on one level, that foundational level of composition, this difference between light and dark, helps to create the feeling of form and the third dimension. It creates the illusion of that. The other thing that dimensional lighting does is it makes things more exciting from a psychological standpoint. We have a very different feeling in an image where there are some areas that are bright and some areas that are really shadow versus an image where everything seems to be lit in the same way. This creates a modulation of energy that is just more exciting than flat light everywhere. Really want to encourage you to challenge yourself to work with light in a more exciting way. The other thing that I'm really enjoying from a design standpoint about this image after light is the idea in the image of rhythm. I talk about this a lot. What rhythm does for us is it combines repetition with the design principle of variation. And those two things together allow us to do two very powerful things at once. Create an image where there is an order and a unity where it resonates with the viewer, where they can stay with it. But it's not so balanced that it becomes static, so it's boring and we get out of there. When we repeat something, but there's a variation, very powerful concept. And uh, I really challenge you on your own to even look for more examples in this image of rhythm than I'm going to point out. I'm just going to point out some very straightforward, basic ones. Eric has shot Chris straight in here, and Chris's head, he's meditating here, is sitting on the level. So there are contouring lines on Chris's face. There are also implications of energy if we connect the dots in between important subjects that are very much on the level relative to the framing device, and that totally rhymes the simple on the level energy of these very powerful linear lines in the background and also these geometric shapes. In addition to that, even though these lines of the structure of what Chris is wearing are breaking the level from the standpoint of quality of line, they're very linear, very graphic, very straight. That also rhymes what's happening back here. And then there's another energy here that's being driven by the hat and just the shape of the head and the mask of the face. And it's a much more elliptical, circular energy. It's really beautiful how the quality of light is rhyming that. There's a beautiful sense of a shadow down here from the mask of the face that creates a much bigger circle. And then that circle happens again because in the background there's a feeling of a circle of light and there's a feeling of a circle of light that happens in the lower part of the shot. And it, it's almost like there are circles, concentric circles, that just keep happening here based on the idea of quality of light that help to tie the image together. There's another uh, very powerful rhythm, and it happens right in here. This is a place of high contrast. It could take over the shot. Imagine if, from a styling standpoint, this part of the collar is pushed up so that this is different than this. Um, but it's not. There's not only a symmetry here that goes along really beautifully with just the way the face has been shot. The face has a lot of symmetry and we're shooting straight in. There's also a quality of line and a movement that does a beautiful job of making a coda to this real strong energy that's happening over and over and over again. This arcing energy that comes down to the nose in the top part of the shot. There's also a beautiful rhythm in terms of symmetry in the corners. Dark here, dark here, uh, dark here, dark here. The corners are penned out here, which goes along with the symmetry of the face. There's some real small rhythms in the background. This is rhyming really beautifully with the earring here. The movement here and the quality of line, again, is rhyming this element. It's happening on the face. So many rhythms. Last thing I'll mention here is repetition of the feeling of texture. Most people are going to get a sense of a metal door here if they spend much time at all with the background. And then because of the quality of light converting to black and white, the way this has been toned and the local contrast on the face, there's a sense of a shiny texture that has a metallic feeling to it, almost like the face has been painted. That really resonates and rhymes with variation with the background. Such a powerful portrait in so many ways. I want to say a huge thank you to Eric and Chris for sharing 
this image with us and uh, would love to see you in 2012 on either my street portraiture workshop. Very exciting to say that I will be confirming dates for an advanced version of my street portraiture workshop. Love to see you on either one of those workshops. Hope to see you again very soon on the Mindful Eye.